Hey everybody, day two of Breakfast with Bob from Xterra Oak Mountain. My name is Bob Babbitt. We're brought to you by Master Spas as fuels go longer, Hoka Let's Fly, Form Smart Swim Goggles, Zoot Sports, Original Triathlon Brand, Premium Plus Sports, and of course, our Challenged Athletes Foundation. Our next guest, Katie Button, a 2019 triathlon, triathlon Canada Cross Triathlete of the Year. How are you? I'm good, how are you? I am spectacular. And you've raced here a few times. I have, I think, I wanna say four times. Okay. That's like getting back there now. Yeah, 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 and you <laughs> like this course. I do like this course, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a mountain biker's course. There's like a little bit of everything, right. a little bit of climbing, a little bit of tech, like, like lots of fast stuff. Right. So it's fun and challenging at the same time, so it yes. should be an interesting weekend. So getting into this sport, what, mm -hmm. what were your sports before you found Xterra? I was a downhill skier. Oh, up. really? So yeah, a little bit of a curveball. Wow. Yeah. So an adrenaline and not necessarily yeah, an endurance person going no. uphill. You, you were like, that's <laughs> no. why God invented cheerlifts. Yeah, that's <laughs> right? why. And yeah, it's just only the fun part. <laughs> yeah, let's go down and down. then someone will carry me Somebody up. Somebody will carry me yeah, up. Yeah, and I'll come down. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, so it was a little bit of an adjustment to that. Now were you starting to do some mountain biking is training for skiing a little or? bit i i was part of that like road bike boom i guess or uh, we all were yes um um and so we i think like a, a bunch of the skiers we all kind of like Everest. gravitated to road cycling yes. and then um I had the opportunity to go to the States or stay in Canada for school, and I decided to stay in Canada, so that was the end of my downhill skiing career. <laughs> and then I was looking for something to fill the void. Wait, so you, if you had gone to the States, you would have skied for somebody? Yeah, yeah. But, so why'd you decide not to go? I, you know, I would think I was kind of done with skiing. You've been doing it. I was done so with the cold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, so you're was, done with the cold. Yeah, okay. yeah, I was kind but of you done stayed with in the Canada. cold. And then I stayed in, yeah, but that's true. And then I stayed in Canada. <laughs> what in, were you thinking? In Ontario. Of? Yeah, I, I didn't quite figure out. It, wasn't I did eventually team, move west, yeah. so I eventually figured oh, it out. Okay, was, there was no ski team in Miami that you could have found or something no, like that. Yeah, I mean, what the, what yeah. the heck? I so. So skiing, uh, was it the type of thing where you were thinking potentially going to Olympics? Yeah, for sure. Okay. I think that, that definitely growing up, you know, when you're 13 yes. and you're full on, like oh. you get right into it. And then um, I think too, I was probably just a, a little bit, I wasn't quite there. Um, maybe if I had stuck with it another couple of years, I would have qualified for the national team. Right. And then my life would have been very different. Right. But it <laughs> or was, I would yeah. have stuck it out and gone to the States for school. But you got to the point where you sort yeah, of was, had enough. Yeah, I kind of had yeah. enough and was like, you know, that, and it's hard too. It's just such a, a savage sport, right? Like I've oh. seen girls like blow their knees out, surgeries, like, you know, these career ending, like significantly life altering injuries. When they're young, we like young, really young. Yeah, really young. And I think I just wasn't, Probably just wasn't willing to take the risk yeah. anymore too yeah. for the yeah, reward yeah. and kind of just maybe felt like maybe I wasn't quite there and was ready to move on to other things. And did you find this right because this is about is diametrically opposed to totally, what yeah. you were doing and anything <laughs> yeah. else. Let me go suffer and I go know. uphill. I should have yeah too bad enduro wasn't a thing back yeah, then. Yeah. That might have been a little bit yeah, yeah. Or downhill mountain biking but right because I was relatively new to mountain biking too it's probably a good thing I didn't go right into oh, the my downhill God. mountain biking. Go, go to Mammoth go to Kamikaze yeah, and all that sure. type of stuff because <laughs> back then mountain biking was the you had the downhill guys yeah. who were crazy yep. and then they <laughs> also had the uphill and you, you sort of had to yeah. do all this different stuff. Yeah. than the cross country, yeah. which was totally bizarre compared yeah. to the guys going down yeah, the hill. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and so did it start with focusing on mountain biking? No, and then I was kind of just looking for a void in university uh, or to fill a void. Yes. Um, and because I had focused so much on skiing, the other varsity sports obviously weren't really available to right. me. So yeah, I just kind of was like, oh, I'll join, join, join the triathlon club. Like, they'll be, you know, keep me active. Be and what's something cool? novel at Queens in Kingston. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I tried that for a little bit. And then kind of, I didn't really stick with it. I think I got busy. I was in uh, doing, a, like, a kinesiology degree. Yes. So I kind of got busy doing an athletic therapy internship. Right. Partied a lot. <laughs> <laughs> then, Why not? Yeah, and then, but kind of was like, oh, I really like this. I like the people, right. it's a fun environment. It's obviously like very physically challenging. So it, it's, it's a, it was a nice outlet and a nice 
yeah, it was it was like something to strive for, right? Like most people get right. into it. So, but, but with Triathlon Club, would, did that lead to road tries? Um, I did a couple, um, and then I think it just kind of opened the door to like, this is what triathlon is, right. and here's some races you can do. And then I think in my, I don't know if I was quite in physio school yet, but I do remember seeing a picture of Christine Jeffries on a Triathlon Canada magazine, and it had this like Xterra something. Right. And I remember having this very oh, specific okay. thought of like, that looks really cool. I want to try that. Oh, interesting. And then I searched out some events, started doing a few, and then it kind of just spiraled. I think I ended up hiring Melanie McQuaid as a coach. Oh, did you really? Because you know, if you Google like Xterra in it's Canada, Mel uh, Melanie she McQuaid. Would, you know, yeah. that's like the first like five pages of Google or Melanie. Yes. <laughs> winning, winning world title after yeah. world title, yeah. battles against Jamie Whitmore. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So then I was like, oh great, there's this amazing Canadian. I want to connect with her and then. Did you connected with yeah. her? Yeah. And yeah. she Yeah, and she was you. totally. Yep. She's the best. Yeah. She's just so, such Yeah, a and nice. now we're really good friends. We actually just celebrated her. You know, it's so funny. Birthday. Last year I was <laughs> last year I was doing the the TV for Iron Man Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watching yeah. Melanie. And I'm yeah. like, Melanie, I go back I don't know how yeah. many years with you and you're oh, yeah. still racing and yeah. killing it. Yeah, it was funny. We joked this weekend um that ten years ago she was like making comments and jokes about how she was the oldest oh, yeah. in triathlon. And she's and still. I can't there. believe you're still racing. And now, you know, fast forward 10 years. And yeah, she's, she's still, like, still uh, racing. Yeah. Well, she loves racing. it. Loved, oh, yeah. Loves it. You yeah. know what was really fun during the extra era with Melanie and, mm -hmm. and Jamie? Yeah. They hated each other, right? They could not be friends. They <laughs> just could not. And they were so different. Yeah. It was really fun. Yeah. I, I loved it. Old, we were covering. Oh, yeah. yeah. The, we didn't care about the guys. Yeah. We wanted these awesome. two women <laughs> wanted to kick the other one's ass. Yeah, that exactly. was the greatest thing exactly. in the world. It was yeah, the best. Two awesome athletes for sure. Oh, my God. Yeah. It was the best. It was absolutely the best. So when it's one thing to say, OK, I'm going to train with Melanie a little bit. Yeah. When did it get to the point where you're thinking, you know what? I'm actually pretty good at this. Maybe I go pro. I think so 2010, I think, was the first that was I remember because that was right when I finished physio school. Yeah. Um, I think that was the first year I did Worlds. Um, and I didn't do well. <laughs> right. And you were at this point, you're at an this, age grouper. Yeah, I'm an age grouper. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there was such a strong can, like Canadian women's field. So I met like Danelle and Christine yes. and Melanie and just a ton of Canadians. So it just seemed like this really exciting, um, friendly atmosphere. Yep. So it kind of just um, a little different than skiing. Yeah, a little, different oh, than skiing. yeah totally. a little cutthroat, right? Yeah, just, well, it's different when you're yeah when you're. Everyone's just vying for and a it's spot on the national team. And it's hundreds of a second. So oh, hundreds of a second. It's yeah. It's fast. It's freezing. You're on the road all the time. So it, this it was just like sounds vacation. Totally. It was vacation racing. Wait, you race in Hawaii? Yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Sign me up for that. <laughs> exactly. And on and yeah, in October when it's in, in terrible no. in Ontario. Yeah. You mean I can leave my gloves and yeah. my hat at home? Yeah. I'll pack a bathing suit and. Uh, that's it. That. Boom. Yeah, I love not it. Like yeah. Five pairs of skis and two duffel bags and yeah, pretty good, pretty when, good switch. When was when did you go pro? Um, 20, fairly quickly, yeah. I think, like maybe 2012, 2014. I was going to say 14, 13, okay. And that was, yeah, that was nice working with Mel on that because she was kind of like, ah, just go for it. Like you're not going to win anything, just start right, yeah. clawing your way up the field. Because you think about it, at that point, they would send everybody off together. Yeah. So it's not like... You know, yeah. the pros and the it's age not like groupers. I'm going to so get you, pulled. Well, or, you're also seeing yeah. where you stand with yeah, them. Because totally. you know where you're coming out of the water. And yeah. if you're with, oh, wait, that's a pro. And I just yeah. went by her. Well, why can't I? Yeah. It's it's I'll always in in road try when the pros go off. Yeah. And then the age groupers are later. And the age groupers go home. And they go, oh, I went 138. They yeah. went 133. I can. And then it's a then it's a wake up call when they yeah. get in the field next to them yeah. and, and realize, oh, it's a little different. It's a little bit different here. A little yeah. bit different. <laughs> but you guys were, you're racing yeah, with the people if you're age group or pro. Yeah. So you had a sense. Yeah, that, I kind of had a sense of where I was going to be. And yes. Yeah. Yeah. Best race you've had? Um, yeah, good question. Or even the race that meant the most to you. It, it, it told you. Okay, I could be one of the best in this. Um, I almost want to say it was 
Maui after COVID. Mm -hmm. um, oh, so 2021. Yeah, because that at that point I had. You were ninth. Yeah, I was ninth. Yeah, and I mean, not to sell myself short, but you know, it was a smaller field, but it was right. still a strong field. Right. And I had just, I think we were. Yeah, it would have been just about a year into purchasing the physio clinic that I'm running now. So there was a lot of, like, can I still do this? Right. I've got a lot on my plate. Like, where is this going? You know, a lot of the girls that I had raced with were long gone. They were already so, retired, and I'm still yeah, racing. So it's just I'm becoming Melanie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I still, yeah, I need to win a few more things <laughs> to become Melanie. But yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, I'm old now. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's but funny. Uh, it, I think it was a little bit of like, no, I, I, I can still be here, and I still really enjoy this. Right. And it's been worth, it's worth the effort. Good for yeah. you. Well, and then, or, or just, is, and it's not like you're slowing down at all. And you, Hopefully this, <laughs> no, in, in 2022, you win Whistler, you win Victoria, 17th at Worlds, uh, Xterra Short Track, Malvano, get 19th. That's yeah. it's a good season. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, not at all. And this is your yeah. opener. You're just yeah, this is, a, this is my first race. Usually, uh, usually I have a chance to get something under my yes. belt. Yes, um, but Canada, everybody was, but they, they were doing Taiwan. And yeah, yeah, that's a that little, little bit of a trip. That was a bit of a trip. Yeah. Yeah, to race in the excessive heat. Which what is really what are your thing. goals here? Um, you know, I think I just want to benchmark a yeah, little bit. see where you're at. Yeah, kind of see where I'm at for sure. I'm just hoping to have... Um, yeah, relatively flawless race. Right. I mean, <laughs> you, you have you make mistakes on that bike course, and it's probably not going to be good. Uh, so, no, with the roots yeah, and so everything else. Yeah, so I think for there. sure, just just having a a relatively strong start and kind of seeing where I am, oh, yeah. and then hopefully building towards September from there. And but really, the goal is worlds. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I worlds. Think so. yep. Now, will you be traveling back? And it's a lot of travel. <sighs> I'm not going to do a lot right. of the world tour. Yeah, I've just got a bit too much on my plate right now. Yes. With, with other, yeah. Other with work. work, yeah, with with actual work, yeah, with, uh, <laughs> not actual not, so work, you're, but my other work. Yeah. You're a therapist. Yeah, uh, I'm a physiotherapist or a physical therapist, I guess, yes. as you say here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so it's it's just challenging, obviously, to go back and forth when right. you've got a clientele that you need to manage, and yeah. But and you know, what's cool and, is the fact that that balance, yeah, is nice because yeah, you don't want all your eggs in the one basket. No, and, well, yeah. I mean, not for me too, right? You, you can't. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're not gonna make it. Yeah. No, it's hard. It's it's definitely hard to, especially I think in Canada and North America now too, right? It's really hard to earn a living, right? Doing 100% racing, unless so. you're going to Europe and you're yeah, having success, you're, exactly. And have unless European you know, sponsors. for sure, unless yeah. you're there and you know you're you're like ready to win everything. Yes, um, it's challenging for sure, but yeah, it's a. Some days I would say it's definitely not balanced, but right. it, overall I think it's good. I they think the both careers complement each other as long as you stay focused and the thing that i'm enjoying just meeting all the athletes mm -hmm. is there's there's a serious camaraderie yeah. among where yeah. you know that the, the other pro women like you care about you yeah. respect you yeah. and if you have a great race they're gonna be happy for you totally right and you're gonna be happy for them yeah. and it's uh, there's yeah. something comfortable about yeah, that. yeah i think and i i think too it's maybe the sport seems a little bit more rogue but i think we all know how hard it is to really commit to racing totally. as a professional here so it's that um you, there's no place to hide when you're out there yeah. it's pretty obvious who's done the work and who hasn't yeah exactly <laughs> right yeah so if somebody's showing up here you're pretty you're understanding they're ready totally. nobody's coming here especially with all the europeans coming in and yeah the level of the field yeah uh, if you're here you're ready to rock yeah you're committed for yeah sure. or you're looking at it going okay i need to know where i'm at but you still have to be committed yeah <laughs> nobody you're wants committed. yeah we'll see how fast, how fast exactly go, when you've got you know the helicopters and the drones and live all the TV. <laughs> do you like the short track yeah Fun it's, stuff, uh, huh? it's great. I think it just adds that like little bit of excitement to yes. the weekend and uh, I think kind of makes it more of a sort of festival feel. Yeah. And, yeah. It just kind of showcases how fast fast is. Exactly. Um, so it's fun to be a part of it. Yeah. That. And it's, it's made for TV. So yeah. it's a lot of fun. Yep. And it's a day after, you know, you've guys have gone long. Yep. So people can sort of fake their way through something yeah. a little shorter a little interesting, yeah. and find out <laughs> what type of raw speed you have. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be really fun. Yeah. 
Well, I'm looking forward to watching you race. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for being part of our weekend. You know what? Thanks for taking time and, mm -hmm. and chatting with us. So Katie Button has been our guest. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We've got a number of other interviews coming up. Stay tuned. We are at Xterra Oak Mountain. My name is Bob Babbitt. Hold on. We will be right back.